beautiful people, how are you? Hope all is well. My name is Ramon. This is the HTC One. There's a lot riding on this device. HTC came out, they made a few promises. They wanted to get more focused. They wanted to dial back on the amount of devices they outputted per month, almost it seemed. So, did they succeed? Did they pull it together? Huh, let's take a look. Right out of the gate, this thing comes with everything you could expect from the next generation, hardware-wise. So, it's got a beastly quad-core processor clocked at 1.7 gigs or gigahertz per core, which is actually kind of interesting. Two gigs of RAM, DDR2, interesting. It comes in either a 32 or 64 gig model and because of the design that does not include external storage and along those same lines the battery is a 2300 milliamp battery again non removable because of the design so they they had to make a conscious decision to really bump that that storage up and, and give it a big battery from the start because you won't be able to get in there and replace it yourself a la something like the Galaxy S4 the normal connectivity options you've got your Bluetooth you've got your Wi-Fi Wi-Fi AC actually which is something not a lot of people require right now they don't even have uh, look for it to become more standard in the next year or so or, or year or two actually uh, it's got the DLNA technology you've got your, your NFC it's packed. Now, when you talk in design, I originally did not like the design of this phone. When I first saw it, and I remember seeing a few leaks here and there, and, and it was like, it was disgusted a little because it looked like the iPhone. And I hate to see companies chase the iPhone. That was so 2007, 2008, 2009. They don't need to chase the iPhone anymore. The iPhone's not even the market leader. Depends on how you you rate that, but it's it's not what people chase after anymore. A lot of the innovation over there is gone, and I feel like companies, especially companies like HTC, should be making their own innovation. And they did, and they do, and blah blah blah. But when it comes down to it, this phone looks like an iPhone 5, and I bashed it for that. But when you see this thing in person, when you actually get to hold it in your hand, my God, it's a nicely de designed device. I mean, whatever they did with the it, the all aluminum unibody and the chassis and, and how they edged out the sides of it where it's like this mirror reflective metal. Uh, it's, it's so beautiful, very well designed. Not only does it feel like a super premium device, it looks like one just looking at it in person you can tell and on this the speakers it's got these speakers we'll get into that in a little bit it's got the speakers on the top and the bottom and the holes that are drilled for the sound to, to protrude through the, even that has a, a, a really nice look to it it's it's almost insane how how premium this device is you know from the look on the back and they do a good job at masking the bezel there is a bezel, yes, but because the design is so well thought out, it doesn't look like it's much of a bezel. And I can really appreciate, you know, how thin and light and sturdy this device feels. They've also done some, some sort of magic where, you know, I've seen videos of people scratching the, the, the aluminum on the back with a, with a key, an actual key to a door, and you, you just wipe it out. So they, they've put some thought into making sure that not only does it look good but it's durable and it'll last you you know your two three years however long you plan on holding on to this thing i take it back man the design the design even though it it favors an iphone it, it's wow it's nice i i would imagine if apple were to reimagine the iphone they would come up with something similar like this uh, i i like this i really do like the design display wise i uh, i don't know man I've seen the Galaxy S4 compared right next to the screen. I, I'm partial to AMO LED screens, but the more I use the device, the more I use the HCC One, 
it's just so gorgeous it's a 4.7 inch display it's coming in at a full 1080p resolution right and it's got 468 ppi rate i can't tell you how crisp and sharp things look on the screen images just pop this is without doubt the best display i've ever seen on any mobile device you know it takes a lot to really take that crown but man HTC have outdone themselves with this with this display and to go along with that display they've, they've the again the design it fits in it almost gives this illusion that the the bezel and the display and the screen it's all just one really beautiful experience if you're a stifler for Chris Tax being able to read all day on your device and you love looking at pictures and you're watching movies or even if you just don't you want something more easy on the eyes more appealing the HTC one is the best right now that's as good as it gets let's talk the HTC boom sound I get it they're gonna brand everything in the world and it sounds really silly but I assure you <laughs> that this boom sound thing is very very real and you know for a while HTC has been toting that partnership with Beats Audio this is the first time I've seen it paid off on any device and I'm not even talking about you know when you've got your headphones hooked up I'm talking about the speaker phones on the, the front of the device wow it is amazing I, I can't explain it's just something you have to hear it's, it's a very rich sound and you can you can hear the bass and you know when you're playing really bassy audio or you're watching a video or if you're watching like a movie and it's got it's got the surround sound going you can actually tell when something comes from the left to the right it is an amazing thing waking up to the alarm <laughs> on the HTC one every morning Wow what a pleasure one of the only complaints I have is when using speakerphone and I could be wrong but I didn't think it used both speakers and I was a little puzzled by that was it no it wasn't speakerphone I'm sorry it was ringtones when the phones actually ring it doesn't play both speakers and I think it should but hopefully you know I'll, I'll follow the official channels and I'll I'll report it and then I'll reach out to some of my people you know got some pull over there and see if we can get that that tweaked that that would be that would be again the awesome if your ringtones could sound like that because I feel like the speakers are so good that everyone around you deserves to experience that it's nothing like you've ever heard before trust me not on a mobile device it sounds like one of those those Jabra Bluetooth uh, speakers that you buy it, it's it's that good folks I, the boom sound is very real kudos to to HTC for pulling that out now when you talk HTC you almost always or I should say it's impossible not to talk about sense senses HTC's long-running UI replacement or their shell on top of Android that's had its roots way back from the Windows mobile days which is where we fell in love with sense because the default experience was so terrible ACC came in and just made it pretty that's it and they continued that habit with Android and the early iterations of Android Froyo and, and so on they weren't pretty at all and HTC made them look really good and that's why a lot of people really have a loyalty to HTC now with the later iterations of, of Android ICS and, and Jelly Beam it's fine there's no reason to skin it and I think HTC really understands that now and you'll find that since 5 which is the newer version on the HTC one is a lot less aggressive they dialed it back a lot and there's some performance some performance decisions that had to be made here the early versions of sense and devices they ran on required you know sense was so heavy that it really bogged down the device it used a lot of the processing power a lot of the resources and it slowed the devices down 
And it was sort of a catch-22. It was like, okay, well, if the thing that's making my device look a lot better and is making it more usable is actually slowing it down, then what's the point? I really appreciate HTC's commitment to getting it together and really streamlining their experience. And here it is, Sense 5. Such a wonderful iteration of Sense. So the lock screen you've got your time and you've got the weather that's what you slide up it looks a little different than any of the other android slide to unlock or or curtains you pull up but it's nice to have the weather on there from default and you know the, the new redesigned HTC weather and you pull that up and boom you unlock the phone or you can you can even just like most jelly bean ICS devices you have the row of icons in the bottom from your tray you can just pull that up and launch that now not bad when you unlock your phone ACC has got this new social UI this social experience called blink feed again this was one of the things where I sort of gave HTC a lot of flack on my initial impressions of the device mainly because you cannot disable blink feed and I still, up to this day, think that is a very silly decision to make. Now, Blink Feed itself, it's a flipboardish experience. You know, you, you subscribe to a bunch of outlets, news, news, media outlets, whatever you like. So for me, for instance, I picked all technology. And you can also have it pull in your Facebook updates, your Twitter updates. So when you hit the home screen, this thing reports on anything you pretty much would find important. It's really good. Not only is it really good, it's well designed and it, it flows. It just looks nice. I can honestly say this blink feed was not as intrusive as I thought it was. Now, the easiest way to get around it if you don't want it is just to create another page and have it sit off to the, to the left where you don't have to see it. I know it's not the most intuitive way to get rid of something, but you can get rid of it. But I suggest that we all give it a try because it's, it's something that I would say makes, makes the phone a lot more pleasurable to use, especially you know when, I'm, when I don't have a specific task. I unlock my phone, I've got a minute or two, it's to check Facebook, it's it's to check my favorite sites. So it's kind of nice that they already, they figured out a nice, intuitive, and a beautiful way of giving me that without without me needing to do much or, or you know, devote much energy to the task. Second, we're talking HTC Sense here, the mail app they've done a good job with, and you know, HTC's always done a good job with skinning the mail apps and whatnot. It works sort of like Gmail, you know, you can get your conversation views and whatnot. But one thing I really like about it is you get um, you get unified inbox, which is something that I'm so used to on Windows Phone and even Blackberry. You know, just one inbox. I don't really care what email address an email is coming in from because it's my email and they all have to be read. I just want to see them all. I don't want to jump from inbox to inbox. So kudos to HTC for really giving, giving me that experience. Um, one thing I did notice is I wasn't able to set up my Gmail accounts push. Maybe I, I wasn't digging deep enough, but you know, watch out for that. And leave a comment if you can. You know, I know a lot of you guys out there have already got it and loving the phone. So just leave a comment and I'll correct that in the, in the show notes. The gallery. So they've also done some work to the stock gallery experience. Uh, that too has has received it, its fair bit of HTC sense. When you launch up the gallery, you've got your photos, which pretty much files anything on the photos you've downloaded, your camera shots or whatever the case, the Instagram photos. And then you've got friends and friends that pulls in from your Facebook and, and your Twitter. And it's, it's not terrible. One thing I can say is I was a little torn between this because I just want at first it took me by storm because I had to figure out wait where where are the camera photos why you know when I hit gallery the first thing I want to see is the pictures I took I had to realign myself like oh it's like Windows Phone 8 ah okay and then then it became okay now 
they've also done the the power button is it also doubles as a, a IR blaster right which is something that all Windows mobile phones had years ago and it's so interesting to see this old technology come back they've got this got an app that pulls down lists and so on and so forth you can actually train the phone to control your set top box or whatever else you have that's a very nice thing to have I, I can appreciate that now when you come down to the toward the, the bottom of the screen this is something I didn't like again there was a lot about this phone I didn't like when it was first announced and I was I was really watching the release and I still don't like it so ACC sort of broke the mold here on on most Android devices you'll find a menu the menu button on the bottom or the menu buttons there's a back button, there's a middle button, and then there's a multitasking button. That's how the newer generation of Android phones work. And I've gotten used to that because I have a Nexus 4. ACC changed that a bit. So you've got a back button and you've got a home button. There's no multitasking button. But the part that drives me crazy is right between the back and the home button is the, a big HTC button. But it's not a button. It's just a HTC logo that looks like a button. So for the first few days, I kept pushing this thing. And I said, oh, crap, that's not a home button. It's just a HTC logo. So what they've actually done, which is smart a way to get around it. If you double tap the home button, that brings up your multitasking and your cards. And you can just click on any open app and just swipe it away. And if you hold the home button, it brings up Google now. Fair enough. It takes some getting used to, but it works. So I'm glad to see that all in all, Sense UI has been dialed back. They gave it a fair bit of thought on how it should work and how they want it to work and the best way to, to get it to work. And I can honestly tell you, it has little to no effect on the battery life. The phone lasts all day with, with no issues. It never slows down. And I'd be upset if it did with that beastly quad-core processor. But hey, man, Sense UI, for the, for the first time in a long time, is a positive, And I welcome it on this device. HTC has also done some work to the, the camera. And this stood out to me as the biggest balls, I want to put that in quotations, move that they could have done at the announcement for the HTC One. So they went ahead and, and pretty much waged war against the rest of the industry who, who as we all know, been playing the megapixel game. They came out and said, you don't need more megapixels. And they wanted to prove it. And let's be fair, they did. So this camera is a four megapixel shooter, which may sound ludicrous to a lot of us, but it's got a, a way better sensor than you could expect um it's got a, a 2.0 aperture which which is just fairly wide for for a camera phone i think the nokia is 2.2 uh the original titans were 2.2 but you know they didn't they didn't max out all the specs but they opted to tweak a lot of the things that were included and i think it paid off so for instance this this, this hdr capability there's they, they call it optical image stabilization and these these things work when you when you take a look at the pictures that this this camera provides it, it it's not bad and I don't mean it's not bad for a 4 megapixel camera in comparison to something like my Lumia 920 or an iPhone 5 they're good it actually wins in certain situations it's a very intelligent camera in terms of um, in terms of how it meters light and the focal points it picks on its own it's, it's a very intelligent camera and I can appreciate that now where it falls short is these images are, are great for I don't know you you want to send them out on Facebook Google Plus Twitter Instagram they all look beautiful the problem is if you're one of those people who for whatever reason would want to print a photo not gonna happen here or if you use digital zoom not gonna happen here you you start to see where that four megapixel falls short but nonetheless these the you know the images that come from this camera are really good 
And kudos to ACC for really uprooting a, a myth that the more megapixels, the better. Me, personally, I would have liked to see them go with an 8 megapixel camera, but make these changes, optimizations that they did to that. Maybe it would have been top of the class by a long shot. Who knows? As much as I love this thing, it's not perfect. I mean, there, there's few annoyances here, but they are annoyances. For instance, sense. I just praised it, right? I do love it. I think it's nice. But some people may want to turn it off. And I spent the first few days fighting myself as, uh, you know, should I install another launcher or, you know, but it's not that easy. Sense is everywhere on this phone. So installing a launcher isn't really going to cure what you're trying to get rid of. You're going to have to go out and flash a ROM, which is a fair bit of work for, for people who are less tech savvy. I, it is what it is, right? I like Sense. I think if you give it a chance, you will too. But just know it is a drawback that you can't simply turn it off. The button layouts in the bottom you get used to it but it's it's still like come on with the HTC logo man put that somewhere else or don't put it at all it's on the back of the phone we know it's HTC yes I you're just wasting you are confusing people and you're wasting real estate the power button on the top I get it because of the IR blaster it needs to be on the top but it it's so weird to reach for a power button on the top of a device these days this is probably the only device other than the blackberry z10 i had that has the power button on the top and the z10 got excused because the screen is always on so i never really used the power button check out that review so you, you understand what i'm talking about and it, it really it feels because the phone it, it is a big phone at 4.7 inches that's just the screen right we're not accounting for the rest of the design of the phone I find it cumbersome sometimes to reach at the top of the device for the power button. Some may, some may not. It's just something I personally was annoyed at a few times. Uh, and the lack of a removable battery or a storage card or expandable storage card. Now, yes, that's part of the design and for some you know you Android guys are big on this for some that is a big deal but I'm willing to sacrifice that for a great design uh, a beautiful device so I can live with the fact that it doesn't have it but for some people out there this is a big drawback so you know you gotta you gotta really think about that before you go in you know no removable battery no storage card that that could be an issue I must apologize to HTC. <laughs> all in all, advice to help when it first came out. Um, and a lot of what I complained about now that I use it, it's interesting for the first time to have a technology company really prove me wrong on all aspects of the product. It, it's, it's refreshing. I mean, you forget that it looks like an iPhone after the first few minutes because it just feels so good in your hand you know and it doesn't matter that you can't disable blink feed because it's actually useful and it doesn't matter that the camera is only four megapixels because the pictures are beautiful and it's time and time again with this device you know anything you may think is a downfall you start to reimagine it after using it you know it doesn't matter that I can't remove the battery well the thing lasts all day I have no issues with the battery. I get home and it's well over 30-40% left. I think HTC set out to do something very specific which was streamline their products and what they offer and the experience they offer and they pulled it off. This right now the HTC the HTC One I'm going to say is the best Android device on the market. And I want you guys to, to know that I do know that the, the Galaxy S4 exists. And without getting into it, you know, there's a bunch of reasons I can tell you that just didn't make the cut. It's very close. It's a very close race. 
But uh, look out for a video me and Tawan will be going through, you know, why we think. He thinks the S4 is the best. I say the HTC One is the best. But you can't go wrong with the HTC. It's, it's, it's fighting for your preference. And kudos to HTC for pulling this off. This is exactly what they needed to get back on top. And going forward, this is a very premium device. And I, I love them for that. But they're going to have to come up with something similar than this for a mid-range or low-level device. And I'm interested to see what they do. But if they can just keep this device, you know, release one every year or so, or, or so I, I think people would be happy to come back to HTC. And one more thing. I feel like the development behind this device is going to be phenomenal. Like if you check XDA developers... I think that community might be the best Android community in another three, four months. Because this device is so solid, man. It's hard not to love it. But yeah, HTC, congratulations, man. I give this phone a strong 5 out of 5. Even with its flaws and its nuances, this phone is the business. I'm a, I'm a Windows phone whore. And I love my Lumia 920 to death. But... This HTC One is currently my favorite device for more reasons than one. Even though I'm not an Android guy, still my favorite device. And that says worlds about the device itself. So, listen, leave me a comment. Let me know if you disagree or if, if you, you, you agree. Like the video if you liked it. Let us know that you're out there and you're listening. And subscribe to the channel. We're everywhere. Alright, it's your boy Ramon. And I'm out. Peace.